Hello, welcome back to Monster Train. It's another late night episode. It's 3.30 a.m. However, this episode was almost not here. We almost didn't make it. Uh, I had to end my stream early because... Hornbreaker Prince today, by the way. I had to end my stream early because Spelunky crashed and wouldn't reopen. And then uh, when I went to restart my PC, it wouldn't restart. And then it wouldn't turn on. However... Like, it just got stuck on the restarting screen. It's not a good sign. I believe something is wrong and will probably go wrong soon. However, uh, you know, I'm just going to pretend like nothing's wrong and just hope that it stops being a problem because the last time these problems popped up was like three months ago and then they just went away. So. But yeah, I I gave it one more restart before I... Or no, not one more restart, rather. It was, like, stuck on the restarting screen, and I was going to go to bed and just wake up and deal with it tomorrow. But I was like, I should just get up and, like, press the button that restarts my PC for me. And I pressed that, and it turned on. And it's like nothing happened. So, you know. We made it. We get to play a run of Monster Train. Woohoo. Let's get it, shall we? So. Today is Pushback Talos. Failure Arcus Sap Seraph, Hidden Passage, Wildwood Sap Rage Serum. Red Exile Green. Cool. I should also mention I am very tired. Uh, that's it. The end of the updates. Emblem of the Exiles is really good here. These are both very good, but I think Thorn Casing is the worst of the Sting artifacts. I think that Piercing is not a good enough effect to warrant it being a take here over a really good artifact like Emblem of the Exiles. And I'm gonna play Wrathful. Although, you got Emblem of the Exiles, you got Reaper. Ooh, we got some regen in here as well. I mean, yeah, you know what I want to do here, right? I want to click on Reaper, and I want to give him spikes. And then I want my Reaper Spikes Prince to slay entire floors. I'm gonna go Wrathful. That, that line seems like a real, it seems like a grief. It seems like I'm, uh, inting. I've been playing so much League lately. I mean, it's just, it's all League of Legends terminology. 10, 15. Uh, I have to ping off some of these, but then this is free. This trial should be free. But yeah, I did not end up recording TFT last night after the episode I recorded. I just went to bed. Every time that I say maybe I'm going to do a thing after I record this... I almost never do it because when I finish a recording late at night, like a recording after like three o'clock, it's pretty safe to assume I will not be doing anything after it other than just going to bed. These recordings. God. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of yawns. You know how it is. But these recordings take like 45 minutes to an hour, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, it's going to be a lot of... I mean, that, that doesn't seem like a lot of time now, but when it's 4.15 a.m. and I think about firing up another one and I go, I won't be in bed until 5 a.m. is when I go, yeah, I should probably just call it a night and then we can do this again tomorrow. Uh, I should just ascend the boss here away from his goons. We're, we're never, like, you slam trial against clergy because hornbreak, this Hornbreaker Prince, Rage Prince, crushes clergy. He does really, really well into the clergy. With the torches as well, it's very nice. Uh, I've been I've been taking Ritual of Battle and liking it. It is Sap Seraph, but like I've been I've been really digging Ritual of Battle lately. Ah, uh, no spikes. I'll take Steel Enhancer, I think here. Although I should probably take the Glimmer since I skipped the event. I should take the Glimmer. Yeah. Uh. What do I want on this run? I want Animus of Will with Rage. That sounds fun. Hornbreaker Prince scales up by us finding spikes, and then we just put Rage on Animus and went off of that. We want to give her something good to start with. Multi-Strike one is always a weird one to see for your Animus of Will. Uh, Husk Hermit's our backline killer, but ideally we don't need Husk Hermit. Yeah, yeah, we don't want Husk Hermit here. Ideally we pull spikes and then we don't want him. Could take a, I should take an Awoken Hollow. Awoken Hollow would have been a good fallback plan to put regen on. Oh well. Uh, in theory, so the Rage 7 is worth 
uh, more than plus 10 for the first three rounds and then less for the next uh, re the remaining rounds in a combat that lasts eight rounds rage 7 is going to be better as an initial burst uh, the reason I like Rage 7 more is because it's better, you get that little extra burst, which doesn't seem like a lot, and it really isn't that big of a difference, but when you're shown them side by side, I think it is worth considering both and coming to a conclusion, and in this one I'm going to pick, just checking real quick, pick Rage 7. It's Rage 7 or it's nothing here? Rage 7 though. The other reason that it's good to take Rage 7 is because uh, I'm going to be playing Rage on her, most likely. Okay. Should not take spikes, or should take spikes? Uh, good question. Animus doesn't matter too much here. Hornbreaker Prince is going to do all the heavy lifting on this combat. Okay. I should be fine to take spikes. I will probably take uh, 6 from the spikes, from the 0 0.25. Or I will take nine, one of the two. Hard to say which one. Now what I can do as well here, and it's actually going to be pretty smart, is I can split the Animus up to the top four herself. By doing this, she'll get the Emblem of the Exiles to put her in a position where she should kill. Yeah, and I'm going to split this so I don't take a curse. And it looks like she's going to die, but then we just play Train Steward, of course. Oh, she still dies. Six, nine. Oh yeah, because this does 9. My mistake. Uh, I should not have killed her there. That's my bad. It's okay. Uh, it sucks, but it's okay. I don't know why I thought it was only 2 spikes. It's clearly 3. I don't know why I would think 2 there. If our Prince dies, we just lose the fight. Uh, what's the combat? It's two Reconcilers are going to be behind, and they're going to be just, they're just going to make him a monster, right? Throw the sap on him here. I was debating on the Ritual of Battle, but, nah. And then, that does six to us, which is my expected outcome. Six damage from that trial. Yeah, okay. Six damage for the trial. Stop it. Very, very acceptable. These Reconcilers are a big boon, because they scale the Prince really, at, like, at an insane rate, right? Huge. I'm gonna not take- I guess actually Fudgling Imp is fine here. Yeah. Fudgling Imp is fine. And Sharpen. Okay, we win the game. Cool. It's Sap Seraph, which means that if possible I'd like to take the Sharpen up, like I might want to throw out a double stack or something like that. But... Yeah, like, that's huge. Really, really good. Oh, look. Look for plus 25. I'm not going to be picky. I'm not going to be picky about it. Large stone is better, and plus 5 plus 10 is better, but I'm going to take the health that we are given. I don't need any of these. We have a pretty solid plan now. We have all the pieces of a really reasonable winning plan. And I'm just going to take plus 1 space on all fours. The reason to not- so we, we're only going to set up 1-4 on this run. The reason to not take uh, History of the World is because we don't know which floor History of the World is going to put us on. Pushback Talos is also a combat where I'm going to split Prince from Animus so that, uh, you know. Yeah, because I don't want Animus I guess I should put them together, actually. As I look at it now, I should put them together. Uh, what'll happen if I play... So, the reasonable estimate is Talos visits... Uh, waves are meaning five, so we got four waves for her to move. She cannot be on this floor, so it'll be like... She's here, and she goes to one of these two, and then she goes to the other one, and then she should return to here, and then she should go to one of these two, and then Relentless should start, right? So, following that logic, which I believe is correct, I should play like this. This is most likely the proper way to play it. And I should put Wild Bit Saps on the Prince. Even though they're gonna tick down, it's fine. Uh, it's better to just play them and not gain much from them. 
We'll see if she actually follows a pattern that I believe is logical or if I am going to get got here a little bit. Both are possible. She might move up on this turn again. Oh. So far looking so good. Prince is going to scale some rage. You're getting pretty big. Now the one thing to look out for on this run is going to be Sap Seraph sapping. And you should go top one. Ah. She did not follow the pattern. If she doesn't follow the pattern... Hmm, hang on a minute. I mean, I just put a train steward down, actually. Yeah, okay. If she doesn't act as I would expect, uh, I just play a train steward. It's fine. And if I don't pull a train steward, then we complain. Okay, so she did actually follow... Okay, yeah, so first of all, I complained. But she, she did follow my expected line. I was just uh, a fool. I positioned incorrectly. That's okay. Uh, this Animus is doing enough damage for me to win, and Emblem of the Exiles is going to keep her standing anyway. But that's my bad. For sure. Not going to take any damage. Why not? Oh, because of Emblem, of course. Uh, I'll just play a train steward here. Did I finish the thought that I had about... What was it? I was talking about something, but I don't remember if I finished the thought or not. But I can't even remember what it was, so... You know. I guess it's not that important. It's... I, I told you it's a late night episode. It's gonna be... It's gonna be messy. But, you know. I was laying in bed 15 minutes ago, half asleep, when I, but I was like, oh man, I'm not going to be able to sleep well if I leave my PC uncertain. The, the thing that bothered me, it wasn't that I might not be able to record this episode. The thing that really killed me is, dude, I haven't turned that program in yet, and it's due tomorrow. The first thing I did when this PC turned on is I emailed that program to myself to make sure it's backed up and I'm going to... Oh god. Anyway, uh, it's never Transcendent, because all we have is one Fledgling Imp. This is just Fledgling Imp. It's a conditional Fledgling Imp, though, which is even worse. Uh, alloy is never bad. And Rail Spike is not bad. I like Alloy here a little more, though. And these aren't bad. Oh, the, the thing that we have to worry about, though, is Sap Seraph sapping our singular floor down. I'm gonna take draw, and this is gonna be draw energy. If Sap Seraph just sat, like, by the time we get to Sap Seraph, we need our plan to scale Rage to be very solid. So we're gonna start fishing now. Uh, we're gonna start looking for removals on train stewards. We want to find uh, two minus ones or minus one double stack. Two minus ones is fine. There's a lot of good things to double stack here. And give a plus 20 consumed a torch. Permafrosting. Nothing. Hold over. I haven't tried this, actually. I haven't tried this. Is it good? Let's think about it. I'm committing two energy per turn. The, the problem with this is... I think we're going to give it a shot. The problem with this is that I didn't take... Uh, energy. The other problem is that it might actually be negative for our rage generation compared to if I were to have a really thin deck with two one cost ritual of battles in it. I'd go brawler and scale brawler with ritual, but we don't need to. He just needs to be a tank. I don't know. I, I want to try minus one holdover ritual of battle. I've wanted to try it for a while. I don't know if it's good or if it's terrible. Multi-strike isn't scary here. I'm fine with multi-strike. I think it should be fine. <laughs> okay. The thing that just occurred to me that I that made me pause there for a second was like, oh man, what if I don't get through this episode? Like, what, what if what if the uh, the end times of my PC occur midway through and then all of this is for nothing and I miss out on like 30 minutes of sleep? Oh well. I'm not that concerned about that outcome. That's an it is what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and just send this unit off of this floor. Hopefully the multi-strike allows for better prince scaling. Uh, sharpen ritual of battle and torch. 
Well, now don't I look like a fool? Okay, we just don't need to ritual it here. Prince starts to scale with the spikes. In future combats, we're going to not play bottom floor, of course, but you gotta do what you gotta do here. You wanna make sure that you don't take many curses when it's possible to do so. Looking good, looking pretty good here with the ritual. So it's gonna be, for two energy, we're going to add plus 20 to this animus every turn, which is pretty good. Definitely should have taken energy in hindsight. However, I was not thinking too clearly there. L-Pact. Ah, eh, should have taken Rail Spike. Oh well. Eh, Spike of that Hellhorn just became really good. Or at least, like, playable. And Preserve Thorns is nice as well. The thing that would be nuts here would be... Lightstone Casing. The extra spell slot would be really big. The Trinket Shop is a dead take, right? I have no... So the shops here are both worthless. Neither shop is takeable. I don't have enough money for a trinket shop, so we'll go to the one that has the better secondaries. Pyre health is worthless, so it's just this cavern. Money is worth a little more than pyre health, and I like the random artifact a little more as well. Uh, Alright. I mean, I guess you take forever flame here. Fine. Gurg's goad is just completely useless. We have no demons. It was the large stone, but I didn't want to hold out for it, and I think I would- I, I wouldn't hold out for it again. I think it was correct to just give the plus 25, even though it wasn't- no, it was pretty important, actually. I'm gonna be pretty important here as well. Armor 15. Doesn't really scare me. Uh, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Prince doesn't get to scale his armor if I take armor 15 and we get run over by self-made harpy. If it were a different boss, I might be allowed to disrespect, but self-made harpy will run me down for that. I play top floor. We got the time. Uh, do I want to split these two? I suppose I can. Not bad. This guarantees the prince kills this one. Hm. Nice. Good sharpen. Good sharpen. I should be playing wild with sap. I want to be playing my consume cards when we pull them. I think. A lot of consume cards here. Even though Wildwood Sap isn't going to do much for us, we should still play it. And by not going to do much, I mean it's going to do nothing for us, but we should still play it here. Ah, excellent timing for Hidden Passage. We want to split this Clip Defender away. If I give you Rage 10, do you kill this guy? Uh, yeah, you do. Cool. And we'll give him a Hellhorn Spike as well. I just want to... Yeah. I want to do this so that we guarantee it. And then we'll take 6 armor, 6 rage for free. Man, that card at a baseline of 6 armor, 6 rage is pretty nice, actually. When you play it for 3 and get 6 armor, 6 rage, you go, God, that sucks. But when you play it for 3 and you get 12 armor, 12 rage, then all of a sudden it feels like you're not getting ripped off. Huh. How about it? probably be raging the multi-striker here. It's good to not uh, disrespect self-made harpy like I am. It was still fine to play it like this because we scaled her up so that she got, or rather we scaled the prince up so he got the kills and didn't lose armor. Probably gonna be how we want to play with the ritual of battle going forward. We use it to scale prince so that prince kills a heavy and then we just scale the animus for the boss. Probably gonna be our line. Yeah, she gets really strong. She gets strong roughly three times as quickly as Hornbreaker Prince does. That's a good sign. Yeah, alright. Definitely uh, am happy with my decision to not take the trial. We do not want to take any survivability trials on this run. Uh, branding right's probably fine. Not that good though. And this deck is really expensive. I shouldn't take Branding right. Yeah, Branding right's a bait. This is a card that you take because I take Branding Right instinctively. However, upon further inspection, I realize Branding Right is bad. Pyre Chomper is actually really good here. Yeah, I like Pyre Chomper here. And I will take... Take Preserve Thorns here. Number two. Is it bad at two? I think it's a. I think we're getting into like too many actually. Ensnare is not that needed. I'm gonna skip this. I don't want to take another preserve thorns. Kind of scary. 
There's like this low hum in my headphones that I can't quite figure out what it is, but I don't like it. I, I don't like it. Uh, it was very distracting. I didn't talk this path out, by the way, but essentially when pathing right now, I, sh I should at least uh, declare this so that you know it going forward. Because there is no use for steel shops, we're not going to go to steel shops. We're going to always target magic shops, and the fact that there were removals here, or was a removal here, is a big benefit. And we'll see that choice again. Like, the, the only time that there's a choice is when we aren't going to, like, when there's no magic shop on the path is when there's a choice. I'm gonna, uh, uh, oh, this is nuts, actually. This is really nuts. Yeah, because this becomes baseline 8 rage 8 armor, which is really, really good, right? If you do the math on double stacking an X card right now, the way that it works is you are breaking even if you play the X card at 2. So, like, for example, with Spike of the Hellhorn, if we were to play this at 2, you would get 4 rage 4 armor. If you play it at... Uh, three with double stack, you would get four rage, four armor, if that makes sense. Because, is that right? Hang on. Hang on a minute. Now I gotta think. No, no, no. You, If you play it at two with double stack, you get four rage, four armor. Right, okay. And then if you play it at two normally, you get four rage, four armor. Then at three, you gain a slight benefit. So, it, I do this math out easier with damage shield, because damage shield is very easy to understand. So I'm gonna do it with the damage shield for you really quick. So at two, you play two without double stack, you get two damage shield. Two with double stack, you get two damage shield. At three, you get three damage shield, or you get uh, four damage shield with double stack. And then at four, you get four damage shield, or you get six damage shield with double stack, right? And as you increase the number that you're playing, the X card gets better with double stack. So when you're playing an X, ultimately, I did all of this talking, all of this math that you don't care about to point to explain that if you're playing an X cost card at really high numbers, it's better to put double stack on it. The baseline with first hell pack. So if you ever have first hell pack, putting double stack onto an X cost card is just pure value. The only reason to not to is if you have a better card to put uh, double stack on somehow. I got really, like, every now and then I get really caught up in doing, like, in, in, like, proving something like that. And I should not. I should just say the basics and move on. I wonder about the holdover sharpen. Uh, not bad. Like, this card is a good card to play every turn. I'm gonna tie up all of my energy in holdover cards, but I mostly would do this just to play this card twice so that Prince gets... Yeah, this is good. If I, if I just play it twice and then never again, it's solid. Because 8 spikes is all Prince needs to take out a Shade Wings in one hit instead of two. Which means that instead of losing 5 armor from Shade Wings, he gains uh, 10, which is big. These aren't very good. I'll take the maybe Prismal Dust. Eh, nice. Doesn't trigger Rage, but probably fine. Actually, eh... I don't want- I, it's X plus 3. It's, uh, it's stupid not to take it. Crystalline Seeds I don't want, and I don't want Wildwood Sap. I didn't- I don't want Wildwood Saps in this run. We have an armor on our Prince sort of situation going on. Okay. This is Failure Arcus. Failure Arcus is fine. He's probably the easiest Arcus, which is funny because, uh, the one that I would target as the easiest Arcus is the one with Fel's hardest spawn, or the, the path, the, the spawn pattern of the hardest Fel. Pretty ironic. I'm gonna double torch this guy. 44 damage might make us get that first kill, nice and easy, without much complaint. Okay. This is a pretty powerful turn here. 31. Uh, I will take you to 51. I'll take you to 51. kind of want to hold the spike, actually. I'm going to hold it for a Pyre Chomper. I'm going to greet it. There's no reason to play it early. I'm not in, like, a bad spot on the top floor by any means. Yeah, we're killing the floor and not losing any health, so I would rate that a pretty solid position. 
So we don't need to uh, rush the scaling. Oh, he killed exactly off of my double... The, the double uh, torch gambit I played. Really. The bottom card, huh? Hate to see it. Uh-oh, Glimmer. And I'll just... Just keep ritualing here. Once he gets his spikes, it's done. Now the holdover on the spikes card is maybe not great because obviously the prince himself, like for the next few combats, is not going to be very good, to say the least. Oh my god, tragic. Uh, hmm. What do you do about this? I don't know. I can't incant this hand. It affects X cost cards as well, but if I, I can't give rage to an enemy or something like that. Mm. I could sharpen an enemy. I guess I just end my turn. What a shame. Possible that ending my turn there is wrong. Uh, it's probably fine though. Probably the right way to go about it. Should have scaled the prince a little more so that he could be getting kills every turn. I really should have scaled him more. Yeah. I should have, like, I would have scaled him last turn, however. It is what it is. Uh, I think I just apply this. 2020 is probably good. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm gonna put it back here. I'm going to turn Animus of Will into our boss killing plan here. I'm gonna hit her with a Prismal Dust for 6, and that should guarantee Arcus's death. And sometimes we get it for even higher. Yeah, we're fine. The damage output on this floor is just really high. So there's not much to be afraid of. Uh Pyre Chomper. Pyre Chomper on the Prismal Dust turn. Beautiful. Very nice. Right. That should more or less seal the deal here. Cool. Definitely take an energy. Like, definitely, definitely taking energy here. And... Channel Song's a bait. We don't need to play around it. Like, Channel Song is really bad here. It's a real big bait. Uh, even if you permafrost it and all of that, right, it's gonna pull... Or rather, it's not gonna pull it. It's not even... The imps are inconsequential because I can just remove them if they're the problem with Channel Song. And the problem with Channel Song is that I lose out on turns of rage scaling. Which just isn't worth it. And then we take energy. Okay. Feel pretty confident in this run. Feeling pretty solid. Uh, okay, so I mentioned that we're going to always go to magic shops. However, there's potentially... Ah, we're probably going to the magic shop anyway. I, like, what am I going to duplicate? It's not good to duplicate this ritual. Rage Serum is the only card I could even consider. Actually, I could, I could do Spike. Ah, that's kind of good, actually. 20 Rage is really strong. Yeah, 3 Energy, 20 Rage, 20 Armor is really good. Uh, I'm gonna do this. And it's actually, it's even more at 4 now. Yeah, okay. Ice Gift is really bad here. Uh, Pyre Stone Housing's fine. I'm not 100% sold on if I'm actually gonna make use of Pyre Stone Housing, but it's fine. I might not even go on the path that makes a difference, but the difference of 25 gold is so minimal. Self shield 2. Do I fear? Eh, I don't fear. I feel fine about this one. We're just always guaranteed the top floor plan. We have, this is the energy draw and space run. Which one do I want on this run? Yes. I'll take all three, thank you. 24-24 is a really good starter for our boy. I wanna I wanna hit him with that because I wanna start scaling him up towards killing heavies as fast as I can. So I'm just gonna hit him with a little rage there. He's at 86. Mm. Just I wanna I wanna just keep scaling him. It's maybe wrong, but like I gotta. I'm gonna go all the way on it here too. Because if we get him killing heavies, he starts to get really big. He starts to get pretty large. 
I think he kills one this round, right? Yeah, okay. So now we put it all on the Animus to kill boss, and we just play Sharpen. Cool. Now we're good. This, if, if Seraph looks like this, we win Seraph for sure. No, no doubt we kill Seraph if our Seraph combat looks like that. As soon as we, ah, uh, maybe not, maybe not. <laughs> gotta, gotta still deal with the double heavies, actually. Don't get too confident. Don't get too cocky with it there. The second sharpen, there was a, it's, the whole reasoning is shade wings, so we got to have shade wings early, which is cool. Okay, a little, little, uh, little too cocky. We're still fine, just took a little damage and I was surprised as well. Uh, why did I play that? Great question. Oh, cool. Probably is good to play sharpen every round, come to look at it here. Got your Pyre Chomper, Prismal Dust turn. I mean, what more could you want? The old nine damage shield turn. A question I get pretty frequently uh, is why do I put damage shield on the Animus on turns like that? So I may as well answer it now since there's nothing else for me to tell you about this combat. Uh, and the answer is just because I want to preserve this damage shield so it affects only the boss. Applying that damage shield to Prince, like even the, the damage shield doesn't matter, first of all, but there are situations where I'll play it and it might matter, or like the way that I play it matters differently. The reason is because I want that damage shield to only affect the boss round. If I play it on Prince there, uh, it's blocking like 10s and 15s, whereas if I play it onto my Animus, it's always blocking a hit from the boss, because the only way that Prince is dying is if the boss kills him. Uh, I'll take another Rage Serum, I think. Card's fine. And Pyro Shards is good, yeah. Spikes is good. It's the only time that Pyro Shards is a card that I will take, but all we care about is putting spikes on our Slight Prince. Uh, I am going to make use of this Pyro Stone housing, it looks like, because I don't really care for anything from the Magic Shop right now, so I'll just take the two removals. And we'll grab... Ah, Quick is pretty cool. Quick is a little weird, because she might actually start stealing kills from Prince, which can be bad. Hmm. Interesting. Worth a thought, at least. I'm gonna remove torch. Remove torch. Trinket yeah. shop has. These aren't very good. I'm gonna roll this. I don't like any of these. Collection details. Good. I do just want to buy precious plating here as well. And then I'm going to pump my money. I don't like Quick, because if I scale her too much, she starts stopping Prince from taking any kills, which is bad. So we want to roll this. Multi-strike. Yes. Very cool. Very cool, Animus. Thank you. Uh, one thing that I want to address is I could duplicate this Animus of Will. However, uh, splitting rage between them is going to be kind of awkward, I imagine. Oh, especially against Saf Seraph, that's actually really bad. I will duplicate... I mean, it's just gonna be Spike again. Yeah, let's do it. feel pretty good about this one overall. Feeling pretty, pretty reasonable. The only thing that's worth considering is that we are against Sap Seraph, but I think our Rage Scaling is gonna go way better than his Sap Scaling can even hope. Especially since we can always play top floor, right? With no, like, we have no negative repercussions playing top floor. That's the really good part. Uh, there's no reason to play anything else here. There's no nothing good to hidden passage there. Uh, I guess if you want to be technical, I misplayed on that turn. Uh, what you could do on that turn instead is play Animus down here, ascend her, then play Prince in front, and then ascend Seraph and get one free round. I did not consider it. I will be honest with you. That play did not come to mind when uh, when observing that turn. So I want to start by scaling our Animus up this time, because it is actually, it's a bit of a race. Prince has to get most of his, uh, he's not going to kill many heavies here is what I'm trying to say. He's going to have to get it through spikes combo, and that's fine. I'm okay with that. Play this for four. Because we need to, we need to hyper focus on scaling Animus, I think. And we're actually going to make use of the regen, it looks like, as well. Sharpen, we get to make use of regen, hit you with a ritual battle. I'm gonna wait on this spike because we can do better than eight. 
I think we have it now. The 97 times 4 is a good look. Our prince is going to heal up most of the damage he took as well. Uh, you're at 8, so I don't need to play it anymore. And we're just chilling. Waiting for Spike plus Pyre Chomper. Very good, very, very good run. Very happy with this one overall. I got, I got the, the starter was, oh, what do I want here from this unit draft? Animus of Will plus Rage after taking Ritual of Battle. And I gotta tell you, Ritual of Battle did not let me down. I've been, I've been Rage's biggest detractor. I know. I know. And it, it does, every time that I admit something like this, someone inevitably will hit me with a, I told you so. However, I will accept your I told you so's, even if they pain me greatly because I've been wrong about Rage. I think that uh, even, I, I don't think I was wrong in the past, per se, about Rage. I think that in the past, Rage was not a good mechanic. Because the cards that generate Rage is, are really bad. However, Ritual of Battle now, starting at 10 Rage, is good. I think it's a card that you can take and you can find reasonable success with. Uh, as long as you have one thing that it makes sense for in the deck. And when I picked Ritual of Battle, because it's not a bad card to take prospectively, is what I've been finding. It's not a bad card to pick and go, let's see what happens down the line. Right? That's what I've been learning. It's not bad for me to pick Ritual of Battle and go, let's see where this takes us. And where it took us in this case was to an Animus of Will. The downside is you have a card that, at its worst, is just not playable, and then you give it two minus ones and it becomes... Like, even, even in its worst case, where it's one energy, give a unit plus 20 attack, that's fine, right? That's okay, and when you combine it with other rage generation, like Fledgling Imp, like Rage Serum, it gets a little better. When you combine it with multi strike, obviously it's insane. And when you combine it with consistent rage generation, it's a lot better as well, right? Adding 20, or rather, adding 10 rage to a pile of scaling rage is a lot better than adding 10 to a unit who's just going to hit once with it. Yeah, Ritual of Battle's pretty good. Uh, it's better than I thought it was when they put it, took it to 10, but at 10, it's where it's, 10 is where it really starts to feel like the numbers make a difference. At 8, even. 16 attack doesn't uh, often falls short, I think, but 20 starts to feel like a really good number. To me, at least. Anyway, thanks for watching. Almost missed today's episode, and I, I was scared. But if you enjoyed, leave me a like. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.